Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. Is the Nexus 4 the best Android phone you can buy? This is our full review just ahead. Let's get to it. The first thing you'll notice about the Nexus 4 is that it looks a bit like its predecessor, the Galaxy Nexus. The front of both devices offer a sleek, buttonless design, but the differences stop there. On the back of the Nexus 4 is a smooth piece of glass that has a brilliant light catching pattern to it. While beautiful, the choice to put glass on the back of the Nexus 4 comes at a cost. It's slippery in hand, in the pocket, and even when placed on a smooth table. This matters because the Nexus 4 can slide out of a pocket or off of a table if you're not careful. You'll definitely want to use a case. Another cost to the glass on the back is that you cannot access the battery, which isn't too big of a deal because the Nexus 4 has pretty great battery life. Finally, two pieces of glass on a phone means that you're twice as likely to crack glass if you drop the phone. Again, get a case if you're getting the Nexus 4. On the sides of the Nexus 4 is soft touch plastic. This plastic part, in contrast with the glass, actually makes the Nexus 4 feel a bit cheap when you wrap your fingers around it. While relatively thick at 9.1 millimeters, the Nexus 4 is one of the lightest phones on the market at 139 grams. When you pick it up for the first time, you might wonder whether there is a battery inside. On the front of the Nexus 4, we have a single piece of extremely smooth Gorilla Glass. Like the iPhone 5, the Nexus 4 uses in-cell touch display technology, which bonds the touch sensor directly to the glass. This allows the screen mechanism to be thinner by removing a layer. It also brings the screen about a millimeter closer to the glass, which is a nice effect. Unfortunately, it also has a negative impact on touch responsiveness. More on that later. Like the Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus 4 has a multicolor notification LED. In this case, it's below the screen, and it can be controlled with apps like Lightflow to get a variety of colors for different applications. Let's talk about specs. It's powered by Qualcomm's new Snapdragon S4 Pro quad-core CPU, running at 1.5 GHz. It has 2 GB of RAM and your choice of 8 or 16 GB of storage. Hint. 8 gigabytes is just not enough, even if you download a lot of content, because right off the bat you have less than 6 gigabytes to work with. The Nexus 4, like a lot of Android phones these days, does not have removable storage, so choose your storage option wisely. The non-removable battery is sized at 2100 milliamp hours. Now let's talk about the display. It's a 4.7 inch 1280 by 768 LCD panel, which makes for a PPI of 320. Versus the Galaxy Nexus, you're getting an extra 48 horizontal pixels, which is always nice, so you can see a little bit more screen content. Up close, pixels are small enough to where you cannot see them, so text and icons look super sharp. The screen's color saturation and contrast is as good, if not better, than the One X. The viewing angles are also impressive, but the highly reflective screen makes it difficult to see the display off angles. LG's bonding of the touch mechanism with the glass made for problems with touch responsiveness. This rears its head when typing and when doing a pinch to zoom, when the display feels a bit numb and slow compared to other Android devices. It's not a deal breaker, but something you're going to have to get used to if you get a Nexus 4. The S4 Pro quad-core chip on the Nexus 4 combined with uncluttered Android 4.2 means that the Nexus 4 is one of the fastest Android phones we've ever come across in general day-to-day -day operation. But in our tests, it wasn't dramatically faster than, say, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, but faster is faster. Unfortunately, we found the Nexus 4 to be a bit laggy in one place it shouldn't be, the browser. Google's choice of including the still slower than stock Chrome browser is confusing. While Chrome has some neat features when compared to the stock Android browser, it's just not as fast, period. The Nexus 4 is the first Android phone to ship with Android 4.2, which brings forth some niceties like improvements in the notification shade, improved camera controls and photosphere, and lock screen widgets. Android 4.1 was already fantastic, and the upgrade to 4.2 just helps to round out Android even more. Now onto some test notes. The Galaxy Nexus had a pretty terrible camera. How does the Nexus 4 do? Well, you be the judge by looking at these sample images. To our eyes, the Nexus 4 seems to have a problem with color saturation. It's definitely better than the Galaxy Nexus, but it's no Galaxy S3. The Nexus 4 lacks LTE, although there's an easy software hack you can do to enable it over Band 4, which is what T-Mobile will be using when their LTE is launched. In the Philadelphia area, we tested the Nexus 4 both on T-Mobile and AT&T over HSPA+, 
and clock speeds of up to 10 megabits per second down and 4 megabits per second up, with the average falling around 4 to 5 down and 2 up. That's about a quarter or a fifth of the speed of LTE, of course. Battery life is above average. With heavy use, you can get through a day and a long night. With moderate use, you'll be able to stay off the charger for a day and a half and perhaps more. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the Nexus 4. We like that the price is so fantastic. We like that Android 4.2 adds some great new features to Android. And we like that the display on the Nexus 4 is one of the best we've ever seen on a smartphone. We don't like that there are touch sensitivity issues with the screen. We don't like the super slippery design, and we also just can't get past the lack of LTE when every high-end and most mid-range Androids now have it. So we give the Nexus 4 a 7 out of 10. It lost some points because of issues with the touch sensitivity of the screen, with the camera not being so great, the lack of LTE, and some other things. The Nexus 4 is a great phone, but it is not the best. Android phone in our opinion. We'll have a full review on pocketnow.com shortly where you can read more about benchmarks, day-to-day -day performance, camera samples, and more. In the meantime, thanks for watching and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That's it for now.